Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and I'm so glad to be with you again today. This is going to be the last chart we do on this big chart presentation called What is Man? And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start all over again and do the very first chart because it's a synopsis of the whole thing. And I thought it would just be good to end up just where I began. And I think that's how the Bible is. The beginning and the end are book ends to the whole presentation. And so the beginning is just as important as the end. So let me start with this chart called Cleansed Consciousness. And we're just going to take one little short look at it, and then I'm going to read you some verses. Okay, let's go to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Why do we need a cleansed consciousness? Because we really need to understand ourselves. This, this is what we don't understand as Christians. It's our self. What about myself? Who was I? Who am I now? Who do I think I am? But who, is, who am I really? Who does God say that I am? That's the point. And so, and there's an evolution of really learning and a journey where, whereby God reveals these truths to us. And so this little, this four eyes, I call it that, really is the journey of how we discover ourselves to be a wrong self. And then we, we discover the, our, a deceived self. And then we understand ourselves to be a resting self. And then, then finally, we really know the truth that we're a right self. So that's the cleansed consciousness from who we think we are to who we really are. Because we've been inundated with satanic lies our whole life. And the Bible says the only way we're going to be transformed is if we renew our mind to the truth of how God sees us and not how we think. So... We need a cleansed consciousness. Now, let me read to you how Jesus did that for us on our behalf. He did that. And let's verse 14 of chapter 9 of the book of Hebrews. I'm reading verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot? Purge your conscience or consciousness from dead works to serve the living God. Well, all of us don't want dead works, but what are dead works? Dead works are self-effort works <laughs> to serving the living God. And of course, it's got to be by faith. The only way we can serve God is by faith in Christ, who is our life and who is the one that lives inside of us and is the power source that we live from. And, and But our consciousness needs to be cleansed from that because we don't think like that. We all think like that we're just independent selves able to accomplish all that God wants us to do really by our own flesh efforts. That's what we think. I can be good enough. I can refuse and resist evil and I'll be good enough and I'll do all the good things and therefore I'm accepted of God. That, that, that's dead works right there. Dead works. Well, we, we need to learn how to serve the living God the, in, by faith in who we really are. And what will happen to us, it will cleanse our consciousness from a sin consciousness. Because as long as we think we're going to do our own goodness, our own righteousness, and our own good works, because we're good people, even though we call ourselves Christians, but we're such good people, you see, if we really think that, we need a cleansed consciousness. And you need to understand, left to yourself, you're as evil as the devil himself. You're, and, but through the cross, we're not left to ourselves. But we've got to understand what it means to have this kind of thinking in our minds. It's really stinking thinking. We were resurrected from the grave, but actually we still think like the devil. Now look at verse 2 of chapter 10 of Hebrews. For then... He's given the difference between the Old Testament, which was a shadow of good things to come, and what comes, what, what we have in Christ. And he says this, 
and we can understand it kind of uh, from an opposite way. He said, for then the Old Testament would have not have ceased to offer the high priest, offer the sacrifices um, yearly, because the because if they were truly purged and made perfect, you see, uh, the worshipers once purged should have no more consciousness of sins. So, you see, having the mind of Christ and the consciousness of the new consciousness of the new creation is not a sin consciousness. It's a Christ consciousness. It's a God consciousness. It's seeing God in, in everything and God's purposes and anything that's happening to us. So now let's look at this chart. Let's look back at the four eyes, I call it. And let's go through it um, quickly because I want to I want to finish today. This is my last time that I'm going to be with you with this "What Is Man" presentation. Re, I call it "What Is Man" presentation revisited. So, all right, let's look. It says being, trying, resting, and then being again. Now, under the being, the first being all the way to the uh, left is wrong self. All right, well, look at that I. That's a self, right? Okay, why would in the world would I put Satan over that I? Well, we've got to see as God sees, and we've got to understand as God says it, so we've got to see who we were before we were saved. Wow, nobody wants to see this. We don't think we're that much out of control. It's because we still think, think we have a little bit of goodness. We all have to fall in that lie that we've got a little bit of goodness in us. We all have to, God has to prove to us that no, no, left to ourselves, we're going to say, oh, wretched man that we are, who can deliver me? That's the truth. All right, let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, and let's just see ourselves as God sees us before we're saved. Verse 1, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, that's who you were before you were saved. Wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Okay, that's lost mankind that thinks he is his own God. Actually, he's ruling his own life and he's the master of his own ship, as it were, you see. And actually, he's being operated by by the prince of the power of the air, a spirit that works inside of him. Wow, the spirit of disobedience, the Bible calls it. The spirit of error, the Bible calls it. That also were called the children of the devil before we're actually saved. And Jesus called the Pharisees, you are of your father, the devil. So don't tell me that we do not have a spirit in us operating that self in us. Well, what does it look like? Well, let's... let's read the next verse three among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others so our lifestyle was what it was constantly it was a heart-shaped vacuum always trying to satisfy myself through things and relationships and positions and money and status and However, or even through religious activities, you see, none of those things can satisfy that heart. Only the heart surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ through, the, through his death, burial, and resurrection and his spirit coming within that heart can actually save us and uh, cause us to know God and cause uh, uh, us to know our Father God. So that's why I put being, we're, we're just being a wrong self. I always say, uh, before I was saved, I didn't get up every morning and say, oh, Satan, how can I serve you? I had no idea that I had this spirit within me causing me to be the sinner that I was. My goodness, he deceived me, made me think I was just myself. So if we look down at that arrow, it's pointing downward and it says, I operate as if I am just me. I am just me. We don't realize that we have that spirit within us operating us. Okay. Now, when we come to Jesus, we have to. We can't see that. All we can see is that I'm a sinner. I've done evil things. I need a Savior. So Billy Graham comes, or however it comes in your life, that you hear the gospel and you, you find Christ and you receive him into your heart. Let's go to the next one. 
Now, I say, I call that still a deceived self. Now, why do I say that? Well, we've got the heart of Jesus because we just invited him into our heart. And he's going to give us a new spirit into our heart. But we're still thinking like the devil. So we're deceived in our minds. You know, Satan speaks to us in first person. And he's always putting these thoughts in our minds and making us think his lies, you see. So we have to have a renewed mind. Well, what is the big lie that he puts in our minds that, he, that really came over through the fall? It came over when we ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, this great big, I'm just an independent I. I'm just an I. I'm just a self that's opposite, that's, uh, that, that God is going to look down on and, uh, and he's going to see if I'm good enough or if I can resist evil enough or if I've done all kinds of good things. So it, it's actually the deceived self that is a Roman 7 syndrome that we find ourselves into because we're constantly trying to improve ourselves through self-effort and we're usually failing most of the time. So that's a deception and we're pretty condemned with that mentality because basically if you look at the chart, I've got a big C with an I in it. Now that's who I really am. But you see, I'm still deceived because I think I'm a separate I able to perform good things for Jesus. And so I'm going to, I'm trying with that great big I. So it's Christ plus a great big I. I always say who changed the gospel because the gospel always has been Christ plus nothing. But here I'm seeing myself as, as I have Christ in my heart, but I've got a great big performing me. What do I do to please God? How can I live a righteous life? I've got to die to that false idea that I am an independent self because the truth is, if you see that other eye, that's the truth about me, but we're still operating as if I'm a separate me. Well, I'll let God help me and he can help fix me, but I'm still operating from that big eye. That big separated eye is the satanic mentality that plagues us and deceives us into making us think we're an independent self. That's Romans 7. All right. Now we can see that there is a cross right in the middle of our salvation and that there was a cross to even open the door to know that Christ lived in us we have to come through the cross but now there's another cross right in the middle of our life we have to learn that the sufficiency can never come to, to from me so there has to be a death to my mentality and actually G, the Bible says in Romans 6 that you are dead it says that in Colossians chapter 3 verse 3 you are dead you don't have any sufficiency in yourself God has to prove that to us. We're nothing but a weak vessel, but we think so much more of ourselves and we've got to die to, to all that self, self, you know, building ourselves up like I can have some kind of ability in myself. Even self-pity is still focused on, on a self that I think should be better or think things should happen to me that in a better way or a more prosperous way. You see, it's always a self-centered self and you see, that, that great big independent I is a self-centered self. And that's, that's really Satan in our minds thinking that causing us and operating us because as a man thinketh, so does he operate. He ap operates as if he's apart from God and apart from Christ because the truth is Christ in you is the only hope of glory. That means Christ in union with you. you your spirit joined to his spirit makes one union. The two become one and join together as one reality, and that's the new you, the new created you, the new creation in you. So we have to die to the dysfunction of thinking that I'm able to do it myself. And that, that so there is a death to that. I, I went through a very dark time discovering that, but God proved to me without any shadow of a doubt I could not change myself. I couldn't fix myself. I couldn't change myself. I couldn't rearrange myself. I could do nothing but agree with him that I don't live any longer, that Christ lives in me. And then that, then you see the upper, the move of the arrow goes up to this reality of a resting self, that I don't have a separate independent self. That is a delusion. That's a lie. Satan even thinks he is an independent self. Nothing is independent from God. All creation are dependent beings. Everything in the created universe 
is, a, is, is dependent on God and God alone. Actually, God's word holds everything together. So uh, we're not independent of God. We're totally dependent on him, but we're acting as if we're, we're our own gods and our own independent selves and we can do our own thing. That's a Satan mentality that has to go. And God is the one that cleanses us, our consciousness from this lie, this delusion of an independent self. Well, as we rise in the truth of who we really are, we will know that Christ is in me and I am in him. And that actually is what Jesus said in John 14. Let me read that because this really is the gospel. If you want to know what the gospel is and what Jesus paid the price for, read this verse. It's in John 14, verse 20. It says this, in that day, it's talking about Pentecost. You shall know that I am in the Father, that Jesus is in the Father, and you, body of Christ, are in me, you're in Jesus, and I am in you, you see. So there it is. When you go back to the chart, you will see you can rest in that fact. You don't live any longer. It's Christ that lives in you. So that independent self disappears, and the resurrected life, sufficient life of Christ resurrects in my consciousness so that I can know that it's really Christ that lives. I don't live any longer. And I'm not under the delusion of self-improvement. I'm not trying to fix myself, not trying to change myself. I'm not trying to change the vessel that God has made me. Now, the God that lives in this temple and walks in this temple is, 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 is the Holy Spirit himself. Now, uh, and of course, that is the gospel too. I swear, we hardly realize what the gospel is. All right, let me read you that. That's in 2 Corinthians 6.16. I've been reading this a lot lately because this is, I'm always finding new ways of saying the same thing. Well, if it does not connect with my scriptures, then don't listen to me because what I'm giving you comes right out of the Bible. It is the New Testament truth about you. All right, verse 16. It says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. Okay, the human you, you are the temple of the living God. The Bible also calls you the church. It calls you the body of Christ, the embodiment of Christ on this earth today. As Christ, as God hath said, this is what God says. Either he's a liar or he's telling you the truth. I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. You, can't, you don't have to figure out how to walk in the Spirit. He's going to do it. He's going to dwell in you. He's, you are his dwelling place. He's going to live in you, just like uh, the Shekinah glory lived right in the Holy of Holies, in the temple, in Solomon's temple. The Shekinah glory in Christ is going to be right inside you by the Holy Spirit. The glory is within us, I want you to know. And, and, he, and you're going you're gonna to walk in that reality because it's going to be, he's going to walk in you and I will be your God and you shall be my people. And you cannot fully know it nor have a cleansed consciousness until you're moving into his rest and you cease from your own striving and trying to be what God says you already are. When that ceases, you will move into rest, just like I'm sitting into this chair. I'm not trying to hold on to this chair so that it will keep me up at all. I'm just seated there. So the Lord says, you be seated in me far above principalities and powers, and I will be seated in you, and I will overcome all everything that comes against you. Every satanic pull, every satanic thought, every world ambition that should not be yours, every, every way that the devil will come and tempt you. You see, I, I, Christ, and I'm not saying I'm Christ, I'm saying Christ as, uh, as the new creation in me, Christ in me has overcome it all. And I'm the temple. I'm not the God that lives in the temple, but I contain the living God and he will walk in me and be in me. Do you all realize that is the new creation, uh, the new covenant. Let me read it to you. The new covenant. We, we hardly even understand the new covenant. Let's read it. And this, is, this is Hebrews chapter 8. And finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the day comes, saith the Lord, 
when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Jacob. So we don't, we don't kick out the Jews because this new covenant is with the house of Israel and the house of Jacob. And most people say that we Gentiles have been grafted into the house of Israel. So, so we're grafted in. We don't kick out the root. We, we want to bless the root and God will bring the root, the original root back. But look what this new covenant is, is written to the Jews. Well, we're grafted in to the vine, so this is for us too. But let's, let's not forget this new covenant is written to the Jews first. Wow. All right. Not according to the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I have made with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws upon, upon into their minds and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Do you realize that is the new covenant? The new covenant is not me trying to live the Christian life. The new covenant is he's going to put his laws within my mind, within my heart, and I'm going to be a new creation. He's going to give me a new heart, take out the stony heart, and put his heart of love inside of us and cause us to walk in his ways. Ezekiel 36, 26 says exactly the same thing. This is the new covenant. It's the indwelling divine nature within us. Now, when we know that, we can start drawing from that well that never runs dry. Let's look at our chart again, because Galatians 2.20 comes alive when we realize that we rest. It's not me that lives, it's him, I in him, him in me, and we are in union together as one person. All right, let's move right to the very last being. I want you to realize uh, if you go all the way to the left, you will see that the lost person is not trying to be lost. He just spontaneously is. He doesn't wake up every day and say, Satan, how can I serve you? He just naturally does it because it is his nature. Now that we have the divine nature of Christ, you look all the way to the right side and you will see. Now, this truly is a right self, is a right self because it's a spirit indwelt self that knows how to walk in the spirit of who we really are. Wow. Now, if you want self-appreciation, this is the way that we can really truly appreciate and love ourselves. You can't love yourself if you're still trying to be a right self, if you're trying to be right with God, if you're trying to be a good person. You'll never, you will never have that kind of satisfaction. But it, but the Bible says, have the assurance of faith. Now, let me read you another verse in Hebrews, and I just caught this the other day that really blessed me. It says, um, have the full assurance of faith. Oh my goodness, I'm not finding it. Let me look real quick, see if I can find it in 10. Oh, here it is. In chapter 10, verse 22, it says, let us draw near with a full heart and full assurance of faith. This is the full confidence, the full assurance of faith. When you know you're a right self, that you don't live, it's Christ living. And, uh, and you, the independent you, the lie of independent self has disappeared. And you know that you're really a right self. And you can say, I am righteous by virtue of his righteousness. I have peace because he is my peace. I am a, a son of God because he, he is my, he is, he is the head. I am the body. I am the bodily form of him because he is, the, he's the preeminent head and I'm the bodily form of him. And I can say that. I can say that. Well, that I is a right eye now. It's, it's rightly used by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit interpenetrates our being and causes us to walk as right people. You know, Paul says he suffered the loss of all things before he could fully know that. And I, I did too. I suffered a, 
a great deal of darkness before I really could know that it was Christ that was living, expressing himself, walking in me, and being the very life source that I live by. So, um, and so it, it doesn't come easily. It comes through tribulation. The Bible says, after you've been illuminated, you will fight a great fight of affliction. But I'm going to leave you right here knowing that Christ can come in, interpenetrate your very being. You can know you are one with him. You know that it's not you, it's him. But this I can come to the foreground and you're not ashamed. You can go in full assurance, it says, with your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience because you already know that you know that you know it's not you that lives, it's him. And our bodies are washed with pure water, so we don't have evil bodies either. They're washed with pure water. Wow, now, now, now you can walk as Jesus. You can talk as Jesus. You can be as Jesus. Don't tell me that you're trying to be like Jesus and the whole time all you're trying to do is trying to do it yourself. There's no other way except he walk and live and have your have his being inside of you. So I just thank you for this whole time that we could go through this whole presentation, What is Man? And I want you to, to know that um, this, this chart presentation is available to you on uh, uh, theliberatingsecret.org. Look in our bookstore and you will see it's available to you. You can have your own chart presentation. Get these see downloads these programs. They're right on our website too. So you do that and then you will find the release life that is promised to you in, in Christ. So thank you for joining me and may God richly bless you. Goodbye. I hope that you are being blessed by The Liberating Secret. If you would like to have for yourself my books, booklets, or any of my TV or radio series, check out our website's bookstore. Our TV shows are also on our YouTube site. And be sure to get the Liberating Secret app for your phone. We have an annual Louisville conference in June, as well as a biannual Woman's Retreat at Polly's Island, South Carolina. Come for a weekend or a week of study, fun, fellowship by the ocean. We also have a weekly Bible study. See our website for times and location. My husband and Scott and I would love to come and share the liberating truth to your fellowship, church, or home group. Please call or contact us through the website. If you would like to donate to our ministry, make your checks out to Christ Our Life Ministries, Post Office Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. Please pray for us and we will pray God's very best for you.